Hello, everybody. It's Monday, and that means it's VOD review time. Uh, this week, we've got a bit of a banger. Not the grand finals, but the winner's finals match of Snipe versus Hebe Motto. Grand finals wasn't like 40 minutes long. It was a real marathon, so I didn't uh, I didn't necessarily want to uh, uh, go that in-depth on that game. That would just take all night, um, but this is a nice little taste of uh, of what their matches were like. So we're going to go over that one. Just like every week, we're going to go over each player individually. So we're going to watch each game twice, once from each player's perspective. We'll review, we'll analyze, we'll talk about some moves, we'll talk about what people could have done differently, and we'll all try to learn a little something and maybe just get a little bit better. So let's get into it. We're going to start the game up, and we're going to start from move number one of game number one, if I can get it going here. Okay. Uh, let me, I don't actually know if my, uh, okay, yeah, we have our drawing. Testing, testing, amazing, perfect. Sick, all right. So, first move. We got double blue in the chamber. Um, hmm. Taking a look at this, I'm not 100% sure what I would actually do here. Not a lot of great plays. You could uh, maybe begin with a move like this. Hope to stack some blue maybe up here in the future, but not necessarily uh, going to come. So you don't know if that's the best option, really. Um, you do also have the option of taking clear in one of these spots. Um, I don't know if that's great either, but I think if I was going to do anything, it would probably be this one here. Just because it opens up these yellow horizontals. And uh, anytime you can get a horizontal like this on the top line, you'll have the option of doing like, uh, let's say, if we take our red here, if we can get two red pieces here, now we have a combo set up. Uh, if we get an overabundance of blue, maybe we can just do some blues here. Uh, somehow, obviously, you're not going to get individual pieces like that, but uh, just horizontals give you the opportunity to do that. You can even also be, if you get these all three yellows across, you could maybe just put... Uh, some red here like sorry wrong spot maybe like uh, oh no that was correct yeah just like this and then this it'll fall down on this red when you eventually clear these yellows out uh, there's just not really any other good place to put a double blue so i think that's probably uh the one of the few times where like an empty clear like this is okay generally we try to avoid that but uh if it opens up other combo opportunities then it's not always a bad idea so let's see what these guys do That's actually really interesting. We're going to watch from Snipe's perspective, by the way. Wow. And the time it took me to hit pause, they did like three more moves. But uh, yeah, they took he took the double blue here. I guess he figured... Uh, actually, I honestly don't know. Um, Hibimoto actually ended up doing the horizontal, which was interesting. I don't know. I think the empty clear idea is pretty sound. Obviously, you try to avoid it, but uh, both of these players having different uh, openings is actually kind of interesting. I'm into that. But uh, let's keep going and see what... Uh, we're going to watch from Snipe's perspective. That's what I'll be looking at. And we'll, uh, we'll stop when we find something interesting. You can see he's already building up combos, as one should. Um, so maybe... I mean, if, if we had taken out the double blues, this yellow blue would not have been very good, I guess. Could have been put in other places, maybe, to make the horizontal. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, obviously. Eventually does get this horizontal idea. End up making a T. That's actually huge. Fight Cade person reporting. Hey there, Platinum. How's it going? Um, yeah. What an. It's so interesting how like five moves later, both of these players have such different looking boards already. That's crazy. Um. So, I actually just uh. I don't really. Yeah, I have, I'd love to go back and see that. I don't actually want to do that right this second, but we'll do that when we go back through this game for Hebe Motto. Yeah, Snipe's just uh, maybe considering making this horizontal play here. Never mind, he's just going to clear everything out from the bottom. Wow. Can we go back for a second and look at that? That was crazy. I just need to see... What a T. 
I can't believe he saw this. He he literally saw this shape here. And he's thinking, how can I get uh oops? <laughs> how can I get blue here and here to make this T? And he had a double red that he had nowhere else to put, and he just put it on top to drop this down. That's huge. Um it's not <laughs> That's not something I ever actually really see, to be honest. That's crazy that he was able to have that foresight to put this double red here. That's actually kind of a genius move, to be honest. Um, I mean, if you if he had gotten yellows, maybe he would have stacked yellow up in this spot here instead of this double red to try to set up this for a horizontal. But, I mean, this was blocked off by this blue yellow here, so he just made a stack to just drop this down. He needed two double red. He needed two blue reds, excuse me, to make that work, but he... He got there. Honestly, that's, that's an incredible foresight from him. I, I I don't know that I'm going to be able to criticize much of these players. They're both kind of awesome. <laughs> but I thought this might be fun to watch, and I'm already impressed, because that's huge that he was able to uh, to find this, this T idea. And we'll see when he when we go a little further forward um, that he, uh, yeah, ends up making that. I think he gets it in, like, two more pills, and it drops down, and you'll see the blues just kind of fall down into that T. That's a huge play that clears out a center that makes a triple on Hebe's side. Absolutely awesome. And then he's going to make another T here. We talked about this last week as well. Uh, just to pause for a second, we did talk about like how important T's are because they enable exactly what you're seeing here, where Snipe now has uh blues on column eight, blues on column five. He's setting up this double horizontal. Um, and He's once he gets a single red, literally any red he will take here to to drop this, and it will be a, just a straight up quad. And I don't even—I mean, it'll leave a little yellow here, but this yellow even is going to come down if this double yellow goes right here at the top. He actually ends up taking this right here. Then he, he'll actually have a—it'll it, actually be redundant because if you get a five combo in this game, it it just stuns a quad anyway. But it will make more progress on his board, which is kind of sick. Uh, <laughs> that's at least something. But yeah, this is just the power of T's on display right here. You uh, you get a double right up front from an empty T, and if you get opportunities to set up like vertical drops from the horizontal portion of the T, that's just gravy. Like you you can get triples and quads really easy this way. So actually, you know what? He could even put the yellows here. Uh, I just realized, and that'll give him a little clear of this garbage as well. So yeah, he's got so many options here. His board's looking amazing. He's in a great position. Uh, not to focus on Hebe too much yet, but obviously his board's a little cluttered up compare by comparison. And when this red clears out, it's going to be huge. Oops. Ends up making a cross out of it. Yeah, and he did exactly that. I think he, that would have been like a six combo or something. <laughs> I wish there was a way to reward players for that. He'll get a little drop time as the garbage falls. But uh, yeah, as you can see, he's just constantly, it's hard to, he doesn't go very many moves without making a combo if he can help it. Um, that's really one of the things that uh, you'll see top players do a lot. That could be a new exact same mod, no cap to trash dropping. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't actually know how that would, that would change the game, actually. That's an interesting thought, maybe for another time. But uh, yeah, that's that would be kind of cool. I don't know. I I mean, I feel like maybe you should be rewarded for that. It's pretty difficult to set it up. Uh, yeah, I we someone should you know someone talk to Exact Same see if we can make that happen. That would be interesting, even just to see what happens. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Well, if you're playing against a player that can do it consistently, yeah, I can imagine it probably would be. Just want to go back for a second. He's gonna get a sweet combo and whatever here, but um, just thought here. This red, yellow, maybe this is the move that Snipe is gonna take here is gonna be this red yellow move. He's just gonna drop it down, uh, not like that, just like that. And uh, the only thing that I don't love here is that like this, he kind of has he has a double blue coming up and he has this horizontal situation here. So he ideally would like to just get his blues on horizontally and then maybe he will be able to drop some things. Like, so maybe this red yellow in this particular spot could have been better as just like a garbage setup. You're going to leave some yellow garbage behind at the top here, unfortunately. But uh, 
yeah, that, that I, I still think that sets you up, knowing you have a double blue coming to uh, to get through everything here and, and get this horizontal going. Then you only need one more blue piece. If you get a blue yellow, maybe you could put the put that maybe like here, and then if you get a blue yellow piece that you can put like that. Now you have a pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet triple. Song had some sort of thing that told him how many doubles, triples, quads versus overkills, or at least he told me about it when he was coaching me one time. I honestly think that is when I made a positive shift in my versus play. Oh, interesting. First of all, interesting that you got coaching from Swang, letting the cat out of the bag on that one. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I'd be interested to know more about how you felt that helped your play. Unless you just mean like... You mean like you, you just did too many overkill combos? Betty's speaking English, but this new bloster at overkills. So I, by that, I think she just means like redundant combos. So just to explain that briefly, if uh, just to, to clarify what we're talking about here. The, um, the, the game only lets you drop a maximum of four pieces of garbage. Obviously, when you get a double combo, uh, then you send two pieces of garbage. If you get a triple combo then you send three pieces of garbage. And then if you get four, then you get a quad and you get four pieces of garbage. And that's all the game can handle. If you do a five-part combo, which is totally possible, it doesn't send more garbage. You still just get a quad. So if you went to all the trouble to do an eight-part combo, let's say, it's the same as doing a quad. And honestly, if you could have done just two four combos instead, you would have gotten two quads instead of one, which is way better. So I think what Betty's trying to say is she... And I believe she could do it. I mean, it sounds like she did these sort of redundant five plus combos a lot and it didn't get her anywhere. And she learned how to stop at four um, and maximize like getting doing damage to her opponent's board by doing that. Because, yeah, you don't really want to waste that your your potential for more combos. It's not like the end of the world or anything because you're still clearing your board out, of course. But um, it doesn't you know, it's obviously better if you could send even more garbage to your opponent. Um, just as I was saying that, I was just looking at Snipe's board here, knowing that this double blue is coming up, red yellow could be pretty cool right here. Obviously, this is not normally a really good move because you, the only way to make this horizontal happen if you do that is to get the, uh, the double, the blue, double blue horizontal in here. But, um, we know that's coming up in the next box. We can see it. So if you had the foresight to think of that, you could just do this and then you'd have, um, a triple coming up that way as well. And you wouldn't even need another piece, just any blue would do it. But he's going to actually just take this empty drop here. Um, I don't know if that's uh, necessarily the best thing here, but um, we'll see how it works out for him. He's already quite ahead in this match, obviously, so it doesn't hurt him too much, but we'll, uh, we'll continue on here. He's going quite uncontested, and Hebe's going to top out there. So yeah, I mean, uh, well, I'll have to go back and see how Hebe Mato played this and how he got himself into that spot, see maybe where he could have done things differently. But just another example, as we've seen in previous weeks, of the importance of comboing as much as possible. Um, sometimes, you know, garbage falls in an inconvenient place, and there's not much you can do about it. Um, but even if you are forced to, you know, clean up garbage that's fallen on you or something like that, it's still important to try to find ways to do that while maintaining combos because that's the sort of thing that will help you come back if you ever go too long without sending garbage to your opponent then you will just start to fall behind unless they start making mistakes of their own but we obviously can never rely on that we don't want to rely on our opponent making a mistake we want to have a strategy that will help us win no matter what so uh yeah that's uh this is this is exactly what even to a player like hebe motto uh if you don't combo you are just going to eventually talk yourself out if, uh, or at the very least fall so far behind that your opponent finishes their board so let's go back and let's see what um we've got here on hebe's side and what kind of happened on this one so as we said before double blue um neither of them took the, the move that i had suggested but let's see i know that they did some both did different things here yeah he did like this horizontal spot here and uh Again, that's not too bad. Like I was saying, you can go blues here, and then you have one more blue to finish everything out, and you get a drop. But uh, I really think ignoring this yellow horizontal was a big uh, opportunity that was missed by both of these players here. 
Ah, but we'll work on something. Yeah, and he ends up getting the double blues, uh, so that's good. Oh, interesting. I just wanted to see uh, this double blue move that he did right here on uh, this spot. He had the opportunity to clear this out and make a combo. I'm really interested to know why he didn't just put it in column five like that instead. If he does, he already has a setup here to take. It's possible he just wanted to build up to something bigger, but uh, I mean... I guess he was more focused on making this happen, but the red-blue right after would have given him another double. He doesn't actually need to load this up. Any red-blue that you put in this spot here is going to make a combo uh, with the blues falling down onto the two viruses below here. So it might have just been a small judgment uh, error of judgment, but um, I think it's really crucial. Like you, On top of just being a combo, column five is dangerous to keep uh, to keep high like this any opportunity that you have to tick clear these center columns column four and five uh i would almost always try to take them if you can especially if you're gonna get a combo anyway i wouldn't get try to get too greedy with holding on to these setups that are this high up in the center columns for too too long um, i mean literally any garbage that falls here is just absolutely devastating for Hugo motto he will have like some horizontal opportunities maybe but um I mean, why risk it? Risking a top out is, I feel like, is almost never worth it. I would just always try to keep the centers clean, especially um, if you're a newer player. I would total. That's one of the first things I would uh, recommend for openings. Like, focus on getting the center cleared out um, when you're going for things, because it's uh, the easiest way to just lose. All right, let's continue on. We'll take some more combos here. Garbage isn't too bad for him, so that's good. Taking more setups. Nice horizontal into a trip. That's sweet. Well played by him. Mm -hmm. I like that. Feels like he's keeping this clear to maybe get a horizontal. And yeah, he's going to set up with blues. Um, it's a little tricky here. He's just going to do it like that and get it fall down but it's important to note that like oh nice quad by snipe it's important to note that like these combos that he's making unfortunately are leaving a lot of garbage behind and we could go back and we could take a look and see oh could we do this or that um generally though i just want to point out to uh that like the, obviously yes you can leave garbage behind and make combos out of it later but you can't just don't just take that sort of damage for granted um, it really has to, if you're going to leave garbage behind on a setup, it really does have to be worth it. Because if you just sort of ignore it and you let things pile up, you get into situations like this. It's possible Hebe was trying to be a little too aggressive and not focusing really on board health when it counted. This is just kind of really rough. He finds a combo, though. That's sweet. He has a horizontal opportunity over here that uh, unfortunately couldn't take, I guess. It didn't, it didn't make a combo again. He's trying to keep his combos going. He'll get a T here. That's good. But uh, things are... Yeah. Oh, okay. That was, that was quite a move here. This red-yellow that he has uh, in column four. I don't completely hate it. Obviously, it's very dangerous, but... Um, I guess he kind of almost has to do this, but this yellow clear down here, I think is going to mess it all up. But I do see what he was trying to do here with the red yellow. Um, it does. If this yellow hadn't cleared out, it would have uh, um, dropped into a combo. Obviously any piece of garbage is going to kill him, but if he just needs, he's only one right away and he's in a pretty desperate spot. So sometimes in desperate spots, it's okay to play. You'll see players do things like this a lot. It's not necessarily always a horrible thing to do if you're, Again, like really far behind. Sometimes you have to do risky things like this in order to actually make a comeback, especially against a player like Snipe, of course. Um, but I just want to go back a little bit because I want to see how that yellow cleared out. What happened there? He took the blue down. Oh, he just puts the yellow down here. Yeah, I. it's unfortunate because it really messes up this dangerous setup he just did. It's going to drop all of this part down and uh, the reds are going to end up like right down here and it's just going to break this whole horizontal idea that he had 
Um, you can we'll we'll go a little further forward so you can see what it actually looks like after this clears out. Obviously, he's got the reds here now, cut disconnected from this like horizontal group he was trying to make, um, and also loses the setup that he had, and now his columns are just really high. And the only way he can even get this complete this blue setup is with a double red, which um, obviously is m not something to count on. Never count on double pills, uh, especially double blues. I'd say that from experience. But uh, yeah, I th if you go back though, like he doesn't really. He says this this red yellow. He has nowhere else to go. He could like do the horizontal, but that breaks his setup well. Like he could just put, for example, these yellow. No, not that one. <laughs> these yellows here and it would clear this out but then this yellow piece wouldn't be set up to fall and make a combo anymore it's possible maybe he should just do that to keep his to get his column down so he doesn't instantly die and also because there's really just no other good spot to put this because he's just kind of run out of options and the setup is taking up so much real estate in the center of his board that there's really no other choice but to put it either in this maybe this position or to put it down here either way you have to clear something out because you can't just stick it in the top corner or something that would be awful there's really no other good moves here unfortunately for him because of the situation that he's in here he's going to take that down he's just going to keep getting garbage and he's going to keep getting double yellows and unfortunately can't do anything for him wow that is a really rough time and then the garbage comes in and tops him out yeah so that's a little unfortunate RNG at the end for Hibimato uh, that got him topped out. Well, he got that double yellow rush when he really didn't want it. Like his kingdom for a double red just to put right, right in the spot. Um, but uh, it, it, a lot of there were decisions leading up to this that maybe could have changed things um, if things had been a little different. Um, and obviously, garbage RNG always plays a factor. But uh, I think uh, maybe if he had played a little less greedy here, he could have had this. Um, at the end of the day, though, I think Snipe just took the early advantage and ran with it. Um, and even for a player like Hebe model, it's hard to come back from. All right, let's move on to game two. And we'll see the first move of this one. We've got blue yellow. Uh, this one seemed pretty straightforward to me. We, we can, we can talk about certain moves here that we can do. Sorry about the stupid shortcuts there guys, but, uh, yeah, it's just the blue yellow here. Pretty straightforward. I really don't see any other move you could make on uh with this. There's no other blue anywhere else, and there's no reason not to just make an easy blue yellow stack to start things off. If you get more of them, you'll have the first combo for sure. So yeah, not much to talk about on that one actually, and I'm sure both we'll see both players do that. Yeah, just really nowhere else to put this. Um, so we'll be watching this game from Snipe's perspective here, and uh, let's uh, get started. He just plays really fast, man. It sometimes blows my mind how fast some people are. Like, I feel like we didn't even see this pace of play even, like, even at, like, Torg in November. Things have really progressed rapidly. Okay, I need to, sorry, I need to stop and talk about that. <laughs> uh, obviously, this is a missed drop. Let me go back here to where he was on that. Yeah, he just misflipped. Okay. So I think obviously it seems like I don't actually really know what he meant to do though. It made I like the obvious move to me would have been oh, sorry. The obvious move to me would have been red blue like that. But uh yeah, I, I assume that must be what he's trying to do cuz this obviously is just a misdrop, so I'm not really sure what happened there. Anyway, let's keep uh, let's keep moving along. Gonna survive this though and make a combo that was crazy let me just watch that again real quick so this yellow blue yeah that, i think that's the best move i just want to break this sequence down and he gets the red yellows and uh obviously he can't put the red yellows over oh my goodness sorry uh obviously he can't put the yellows over here in this spot here because it's just gonna there's no vertical space to make the vertical clear here He's really like he really needed these red yellows to come at exactly when they showed up. Otherwise, he would have had to, like, if he had gotten like blue yellow or something, that would have been crazy. You need to practice turning the pill over at the top. 
you just mean like rotations at the top of the board i'm assuming um yeah top high level i mean you're going to start every game at the top of the board so it's a useful skill to have you're going to have make use of it in basically every match of versus you ever play so <laughs> snipe shows what i mean yeah he's probably going to do like a sick like final like frame perfect rotation i mean a frame perfect but you know a difficult uh timing rotation here Ah, uh, yeah. Where when it comes out of it can't. So here, let me show you what Betty's talking about. I'll try and pause it at the right time. So this yellow red pill is gonna come out uh into the bottle the wrong way, and it's gonna come out. Uh oh, sorry, jeez, it's gonna come out like this, and that's not great. <laughs> Obviously, that's an instant top out, and that's the game over. You need it to be the other way, and I mean, luckily in this case, it doesn't really require any movement, but um. I'd have to lab this to be 100% sure, but I think the trick is that you really want to use the A button to rotate here. And I can't see I can't see his uh, um, his inputs, but I'm almost positive that's what he did. It's actually it's actually crazier than it looks because you obviously you can rotate with B or A, and if you press either one twice, it'll flip the pill the opposite way regardless. But um, I'm not sure, but I know that um, rotation does have some bias towards moving to the left. Um, I'd be interested to try that and see if just double tapping B moves the pill to the left. Uh, I feel like I just instinctively would know what to do here, but when I have to explain it, <laughs> suddenly I don't remember how it actually works. But uh, yeah, that's part of the reason that rotating at the top can be pretty tricky. Not only does he have very little time to to input the rotations and if he hits it too early then he might the game might eat with his first button press and then it doesn't work and he and he tops out but uh there's also when you're moving pills and rotating them at the same time it can get a little weird because of uh, the way that dr mario's rotation works so um yeah this was crazy here to uh to get this rotation at the top of the screen let me just uh like i had it was so fast i couldn't even pause it in time yeah, he just gets it really quick here. He has probably more time than it looks, but that was not easy. Wow! This survival from Snipe is nuts. So he gets really unlucky garbage right here, and luckily he has the double blue, and he's able to fit it into this spot. That's crazy. I I mean, you just have to... I think you just hold left and rotate with... But I think specifically with B, he's doing like very specific things here, where if you don't know exactly what to do, you just die. I mean, he wouldn't have been totally screwed. He could have... Uh, put some like he would have put the blues here and then maybe he gets a blue yellow but he's still at risk of death right here no matter what unless he makes exactly this move to put the blue here and he did it like he has like almost no time to input this this is insane survival yeah i mean if you can pull this off that's obviously the best move but that's not easy to do so <laughs> that's some sick play from snipe for sure Now he's cleared out the center because he was able to do that. Still setting up combos with this double blue up here. He just needs a red and uh, he'll take a yellow blue combo. And uh, I'm sure he's just going to take this. Oh, oh, he had another setup over here. I wasn't even watching. And he just gets a bunch of combos to survive. This survival is really impressive because it's almost as if he was behind. But uh, well, I mean, he, he definitely was behind, but he was able to make this comeback. And honestly, Sometimes all you need to do is stay alive to get yourself in the position to uh, to make the comeback. And uh, now, again, Hebe's board. I'm not seeing a lot of garbage on Snipe's board here, so I'm looking over at Hebe just to see what's going on. Uh, obviously a lot less clean. We'll have to see how that happened again when we, when we run back through this. But, uh, yeah... Hmm. This there's a couple moves here that I I think that maybe he just uh, wasn't sure what to do. So he put this. Uh, let me see if I can go back actually a little bit here. So he did this. He has this red yellow. It looks like he wants to do something with it. Is he looks like he wanted to maybe set up for the horizontal to go this and maybe oh, maybe put it uh, like this way. Uh, because I mean, if you put it like 
this, you're going to clear out your yellows, and that's no good, breaking a setup. If you put it uh, like this, nope, not like that, <laughs> like this, then in this case, you're going to set up for this red horizontal. You're also make, coming up with like a T idea to make this T here. So that's probably pretty good, but I think he must have just misplaced this because yellow red like that, the way that he's doing about to drop it here, that just really doesn't do anything. So I assume this was a mistake, unfortunately. And then this pill, like from here, I would, I would probably just put a red yellow, maybe like this. So, because that's just an easy double setup that he has access to here. But obviously he doesn't do that either. I think he must have just gotten really um, disoriented when he made this misdrop. And I, if you've if you've ever misdropped where you've actually just put the pill in the opposite way that you meant to, you've probably experienced this, where you suddenly when you know you, you kind of just get like a mental break because you uh because you know when you finally notice that this is wrong and then suddenly all the plans you had are ruined and you have to immediately come up with something else uh and it's really difficult to sort of pick your rhythm back up in those spots so i think that's probably what would have caused this move here where he just does the yellow red across um yeah that's really unfortunate but uh yeah i mean it happens to even the best players in the world man uh, they will, you know, it's it's really difficult. It's a great skill to have, but nobody can play perfectly every time. Oh, and he be tops out shortly after, so it doesn't really um, make an issue. Uh, it doesn't really make a big difference in this match. But I mean, if if he be wasn't on the verge of topping out, that mistake could have been pretty killer. You can see now he's got this weird blue red setup in the center, which is good, um, but. Obviously, he was hoping to have a little more progress on his board than this at this point. So if, uh, if you know, Hebe was in a, maybe a little bit of a better spot and he drops a piece of garbage, like, right, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to stop. i got to change those keyboard shortcuts for next stream. That's pretty rough. But uh, if he was just to get a piece of yellow garbage, like, right uh, here, let's say, or here, um, now suddenly things are very dangerous uh, and that all basically stems from just a single misdrop that led into another sort of like panic move as far as I could tell. So yeah, that's um, that's really unfortunate. But luckily in this case, it didn't matter. It would have been interesting to see if he could have come back from this position. But uh, uh, unfortunately, he had more problems on his side of the board, so we will never know. But let's go back now and let's see what he did here that uh, led to this issue. Swong says, Betty, how much are coaching sessions from you? Asking for a friend, not myself, totally. <laughs> I thought you were the one coaching Betty. As if the world champion needs coaching. Come on now, Swong. <laughs> but I appreciate you being here. The tables have turned. <laughs> I mean, maybe uh, we haven't seen you play in a while, my good friend. Hopefully we'll see you in a monthly checkup at some point. <laughs> Betty's ranked higher than me, so she's better, Kappa. <laughs> well, you better keep your game going. You're going to have a lot of competition in November when we see you again. Uh, hopefully we'll see you sooner than that. But uh, yeah, you better. Uh, I hope you're labbing away in the darkness on the top of the mountain, the secluded mountain, and training to, uh, to defend your title again. Because it's going to be harder than ever, I'm telling you. There's too many good people now <laughs> and they're and they're so much better than they were even five or six months ago. So you better watch out, buddy. I'm excited to see it, though. All right. Blue yellow is our first move. Um, Like I said before, yeah, this is the, uh, the same. Like I said, uh, nope, that's not it. The yellow blue move here. That's obvious. We saw both players do it. So let's just move on from that. Ooh, that red garbage is painful. Did Swang actually beat he beat a first combo here? I want to see that. He did. He was able to set up here. And uh yeah, it just led I don't even know if that's so let's I just want to break this down actually, because I noticed this on the first watch through, but I didn't want to say anything. This second red yellow, 
they're already diverging where Hebe goes to the right and Snipe goes to the left. To be completely honest, these I feel like whether you take either of these moves, it's generally like pretty equal to do it here or the way that uh, Hebe Motto did it over here. I mean, they're both red setups. They both, you know, you're not going to get to one faster than the other. They're all things considered, they're pretty equal. This even like consolidates things a little bit more because you have uh, yellow red here, but this one prioritizes the edge. You could get you could nitpick, but basically they're equal moves. But in this case, I think the the only reason that Snipe beats him to first combo here, let me clear this away, is because he gets this double yellow. Um, Hebe doesn't really Hebe is able to put it over here, and he even actually places it first. But um, just the way the pills worked out, this is actually going to give Snipe first combo. I don't know that you can really play around that. Obviously, the pills to come are hidden information that we will never know, except for the very next one that's shown in the next box at the top of the screen. But uh, yeah, that actually really made a huge difference here. First combo is really important, uh, as we've seen a couple of times now uh, in the last few VOD reviews. Um, especially, like sometimes the garbage doesn't do much, but sometimes it's really damaging and it starts things off for you uh, really strongly. And I think that's exactly what happened here. If you uh, let this play out a bit. Uh, Hebe's, none of these moves are bad by any means. He just never got a pill that would actually allow him to knock a combo down. And this this red garbage, uh, and even this yellow garbage here, which is going to fall down to, uh, to the bottom of column two and block off these reds. Um, just sort of eliminating opportunities for him very easily. Now, this red isn't the end of the world. Because we have this here, um, maybe if, uh, if he decides to, he could go for, this would be like one of those opportunities to go for, um, like a red T like this, if he gets the right pieces. So we'll see if he does that, uh, in just a moment here. Doesn't really get the pieces to do it. And is actually trying to set up a blue horizontal, which gets him a combo. Oh, looks like he is going to do it, but he's going to do it on the other side. Really nice. So yeah, that was a great find from Hebe Motto. Um, sometimes when you get garbage, I'm going to go back actually, because I do want to talk about this quite a bit actually. When you get these weird garbage pieces like this, if you have a platform already set up, going vertical with it is not always the best option. Like if you, let's say you get a double red in this spot, you could go here like this, and that would be fine. I mean, maybe you'll get a red whatever and you can just pill delete it off the top of the screen and that definitely clears off your setup but um if you have like platforms already pre-set up for you you could go oh not with a blue but with a red you could just go like this and if you get like a red blue or a red yellow you could just put it like here or you could put a red blue like here and now you're set up for a t and you'll even get combos out of it on top of that so again Look for horizontals. Look for, like in this case, you're going to find a T, but even if this red wasn't here, horizontals are both a little less susceptible to being di uh, disrupted by garbage. And they're also great for combo opportunities on top of clearing away this, this horrible piece. So there's a lot of ways you can approach this, but, um, horizontal, uh, horizontals are really good for, um, clearing out garbage pieces near the top, the top of the screen. Taking things vertically too often will lead you to have these big, huge spires as well. So it helps keep the board even too. Um, it's uh, yeah. So practice your horizontal game, kids. It's uh, it's really strong. It's really important. And eventually he will uh, he will get to that. And he does drop it down. I just found like so many setups in a row here to start coming back. Uh, so I wanted to actually talk about these moves here too, because this is something that's come up uh, for the first time in this set. But I've seen if you watch their games in the tournament, especially in the grand finals, you'd see both Snipe and Hebe Motto doing this. This yellow, blue, and blue red at the top right corner here. These moves look nonsensical. It's like, well, you're blocking this. Your the blue doesn't drop down to anything that makes a combo, and then this blue red up here just makes it worse. Um, but if you're not familiar, this is actually these are these moves are completely intentional on Hebe Motto's part. Um, this is kind of a strategy that Hebe Motto has, uh, has uh, sort of developed and Snipe has sort of imitated as well. Um, and it's it's called, uh, well, if you're familiar with Influx's Umbrella Strats from the Game Scout video, uh, it's very similar to that, but he call, Hebe Motto calls them Roof Strats. 
And the idea being is that, yeah, these pills don't do anything. They don't set up for a combo and they're kind of um, they're kind of bad, quote unquote, bad moves. But the point of doing this is to shelter the side columns from garbage. So if you can get the full strategy, he would he be model would like to set up something like this on both this side and then also on the right side to so do something like like this or something. The idea being that like garbage will fall here on the left and the right, and it'll just fall just up on top, just kind of like that. And uh, if you do that, well, you don't get any drop time, and these garbage pieces don't fall on uh, um, don't fall on the viruses below. So it's just a meant a way to sort of shelter uh, your pieces. It's not something that you can just go for right off the bat when you're at the top of the screen. But uh, the idea is that if this game goes very long time, Hebe model will have an advantage because he will not be stun. It'll be very uh, difficult to stun lock him, uh, and it will uh, allow him to get to um, to his center viruses without getting garbage destructing them. Uh, it's not clear if this is like the optimal strategy of the of the game. I don't think it is personally, but it is something that we've seen Hebe Mato and and Snipe as well doing, especially when you're playing against other top level opponents like no Wizzle and betty and stuff like that i've seen them do it in tournament play um there are some issues with it i'm not going to get into too much detail here but uh yeah this just wanted to point out that this is definitely intentional and to keep an eye on this i don't get why he leaves the space in the top row really easy to top out uh, i think the reason he leaves the space here is because it would i mean well on the left side you actually could do it you could blink a pill over to get it out of the way, but it's just really difficult to fill this spot with a pill uh, without accidentally topping out, like you said. So uh, he left the space there just because you don't really need to fill it in. Eventually, some garbage is just going to drop in the spot anyway. Like you're just going to get like garbage dropping here regardless, and uh, it's going to fill the space for you uh, at some point in the future. Uh, yes, you might accidentally tap left and top out, but Hebe Motto, I think, is confident enough not to do that and to just not make that mistake. Uh, and he realizes that well, if he tries to go for it, he might end up and losing on the spot. So he just leaves it open because it's not really... As long as he doesn't accidentally press left and move a pill into this spot here and top himself out, it would be... It'll be fine. He's, as long as he, you know, doesn't make that mistake, which... Uh, I, I wouldn't expect someone like Hebe Mata to do. As well, Donny has a huge fat log opportunity in the center, really holding out for it. This isn't unfortunately really slow. You can already see that uh, there's garbage that dropped up at the top here that uh, didn't incur any fall time, didn't block off anything underneath. Okay, and uh, yeah, he's coming up with even more opportunities, but he's still very much at the top of the screen. Opportunity. He actually, well, he takes a combo and he's going to get a double red for this T here, so that's good. How did this yellow get here? I think I missed something. Sorry, let me just go back. Was it just random garbage that put that yellow piece there? He got a blue and then did this and then tried to make this set up. Got his T and then just did not get the blue in time. Yeah, okay, that was just random garbage. Well, that's just unfortunate for him. Oh, whoa, okay. Hold on. Let me go back a second. Double blue. Uh, what did he end up? He flipped it up like this in column five. Uh, I I don't. That's not when I see that move. I don't love it. I guess the idea is that he maybe wanted to get like this horizontal action going, uh, and maybe put like a no, not that one. Blue like this to clear this horizontally. Drop these reds down for making a combo. But if he puts the blue in, if we go back like one second here. And you'll see if this blue for this, if he puts a double blue in this spot, it's just going to clear this out, and then things get really complicated if he does that. So I think he saw that at the last second, 
and then he decided, oh no, I'm just gonna, f I don't know what to do, and he flipped it up like this. Um, he also can't put it in uh, this spot here. Uh, if I can just do this, he can also can't put it in the spot here because while it leaves this spot open for the L, it's oh, <laughs> there's no space here to like fit the pill inside. You can't actually tuck or spin a pill into this space because of the way that uh, um, that pill rotation works. It's impossible to like swim it in some a blue a blue pill half into the spot with this small of a gap. So I, I think he just maybe didn't know what else to do. And that was all, uh, that's just why he had to make that move the way he did it. Let's, uh, yeah, let's keep going here. And then it just leads to issues at the top and he tops out. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I think it's, uh, I don't know if this was just an issue of pace of play. If maybe he just needed to play a little faster to get to some of these, like when this yellow piece right here fell, if he had maybe played a little faster, the blue red was coming. It was literally the next pill that he was going to get before this yellow blocked him off. And then maybe that changes things. So, you know, especially against top players like this little margins really matter. So even if you're not playing at this level though, uh, that's, it's not, it's definitely worth finding those little advantages because they don't seem like they do very much, but, um, even in, even at any level of game, um, those small things can really add up and make a huge difference in Dr. Mario for sure. All right. Now we have one more game and I believe it's the longest game of uh, the match. Yeah. We're only five minutes into this 13 minute uh, video. So I think we have at least, uh, this is going to be a long one. So let's, uh, let's strap in and let's get to it. Okay. Red, blue. This is actually a tough one. Uh, there's a couple of things that jump out to me right away. Um, the probably the spiciest one is like this move, which uh, I'm not totally convinced this is amazing. But in theory, like if you clear things out, you could get a yellow horizontal here, and you're starting a drop combo. Um, but that's maybe a little a little wild. Um, you also could go like this and just keep the colors to get grouped together. This isn't actually a double setup though, so you'd need to get like a spare blue somewhere along the line. It might honestly still be the best thing to do because I don't really honestly see anything else that looks compelling to me as a move. Like there's no other red on the board. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't really see what else you could do here beyond those two moves. And this is probably the safer and, and uh, because all you need is like another blue piece. Even if it's not a blue yellow, you can just put it uh, like this, and then you'll get a blue red. Uh, oh shoot! Nope. I'll get the hang of this one day. I swear you guys. Okay. Even if you do like this, you'll get another blue red to put like that. You got at least you might actually get first combo. You leave one piece of garbage behind, which is not great, but if you get a stack of blue reds, I think it's worth it just to get to that first combo. So, yeah, I think uh, this move here is going to be the winner. Um, we're going to see what these guys do. Yeah, that's just the only move, I think. This red-blue, that was kind of spicy, but uh, to do the uh, the red-blue here. Oh, whoops. I accidentally exited the video. Sorry about that. One moment. <laughs> you can edit this out on YouTube, right? Did it save my place? It did not. Okay, let me get back to the next spot in the, in the video. Okay, there we go. Let's try that again. Yeah, and that's end up basically the scenario I described ended up happening. We can go back a little bit. Um, in this case, you did get the you got a, they got a double yellow that he put here. He did get the blue yellow, which is ideal, uh, for his first placement, and he got this, and then he gets the blue red as you see in the next box, which will come here and complete this center combo. And I believe that's first combo for Snipe as well. Let's uh, let's uh, take a look. Oh, they actually both do it in sequence, except their double yellow placement was different, but they get the exact same combo. That's awesome. And he's gonna get uh, his. He's gonna be rewarded for that horizontal setup. He's already starting to pull ahead. This is wild. Oh, wow. I was just going to say that 
Snipe's center looks so messy here. But look at the garbage that he gets. He gets a blue... Like, if he if this blue is in, like, a really critical spot where he doesn't have horizontal opportunities to make a combo, at least, and also these double yellow, these yellows here are blocking off the, the, the sort of center-right columns to even go for that idea. Uh, and clearing vertically in column four is obviously very... Um, very dangerous and if more garbage falls here it gets even worse but luckily the garbage pieces that fell were blue and blue and it sets up a perfect double combo here to sort of bail him out of the situation i mean you know luck is a thing in this game you can you know you just got to take it when you can get it that was really fortunate garbage on snipe's part um if this had been like a yellow piece and a red piece or something like that if he's like tr if this had like traffic lighted him or something like this uh, this would have been a very uh, awkward game for him. I keep leaving for fight cave matches when people say something nice about me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe why aren't you sticking around and watching the VOD review? You, you got me on the other monitor, I'm sure, right? That's got to be what it is, certainly. Uh, thanks, Swang, for the compliments. Yeah, I, I think he's still here. He stopped talking, but I think he, I hopefully he's still here. All right. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying. If you get traffic lighted here, that's really bad. I'm watching and commenting even though you can't hear me. Thank you, Betty. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you get traffic lighted here, this is awful. Luckily, that's not what happened. And he, we got two blues to set up a great combo here. And this blue yellow coming in the next box means he's going to he's definitely going to knock it down. I don't I mean, this red yellow is probably going to the left. That's probably the safest move. Just like, nope, not like that. Like this. Um, but uh other than that, like we're just playing this move as fast as we possibly can so we can get this blue yellow before we get any more garbage on our field blocking this off. Because if this gets blocked off, it's going to be horrible. But luckily, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, wait. Hold on. What happened there? I missed it. Oh, he accidentally broke this combo. That's unfortunate. But that's okay. At least, uh, at least he was able to get the center cleared out. Think hearing you do analysis while also playing and paying attention to both is really next level this is crazy yeah you're just like soaking your mind with dr mario information hopefully it's not too much <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> uh there was a weird move here this yellow blue i'm just gonna put it like this i i mean i don't see a great move here so maybe that was the idea but this blue is overhanging in column five. And this is a really dangerous thing to do. Especially if, well, this red blue could come down. He could put it like this, which would be really dangerous. I would not recommend putting this here. Now you've got both your columns at risk. Um, but you can still take advantage of the setup. You can just do it down here instead, uh, like this. And you can eventually make like a little lightning, mini lightning bolty combo thing. And you can just uh, get it uh, built up from underneath which is a little definitely hard to see, but um, obviously doing it above like this is, like I said, super dangerous. Do not recommend. To, but to be honest, I don't even recommend this move here. Uh, I guess he just didn't want to block his setup. Personally, I think I probably, in the heat of the moment, would have just, by instinct, I would have probably put it like this. Made an empty clear, keep things safe. Um, and also because we have like horizontal opportunities, if we go back for a second. If, uh, I go back for a second and we uh, look at this like he's got if he gets a double yellow or something he can clear this out horizontally as well um, so I don't know I'm not sure how I feel about that yellow blue placement that he did not the biggest fan of that to be honest but um, we'll see what happens here yeah he's gonna set these up underneath oh he ends up getting to a combo anyway but that garbage was not far behind if he hadn't done that as quickly as he did and those pills hadn't come as quickly as they did can you imagine if the garbage falls up here? If he just gets this blue, that's a that's a that's an absolute. Well, let me see here. Oh no 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 no! I don't know how I accidentally pulled that up. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, if he puts this blue, if this blue lands right here, that is just catastrophic. Like that's horrible. Like you can maybe clear it out in between with like a double yellow, maybe like right here, but this would be not great and. Uh, if he had gone any slower, I think that would have, is exactly what would have happened, because the col the garbage ends up falling in exactly these columns. Yeah, so 
very weird um or very uh very good on on snipes part to just keep up the pace of play this is why pace of play is important and why you have to play as, as fast as you possibly can uh if you if any slower player here would have just probably lost the game on the spot if this blue garbage blocks them off there but uh, obviously uh, snipes pace of play is just incredible so uh, he was able to overcome that and get out of that situation still don't love the oh wow we just take a second to appreciate that. I don't even have analysis for this. This is just sick. Look at the, look at the, look at the plays here. So that clears out. This blue yellow comes. He flips it over like that, and then he just flips it over immediately. Just double flip and one right movement instantly. That's so sick. I love the red, blue in column one and two. Yeah, that's a good move as well. I didn't. I was sorry. I totally missed that. I was so. That's just huge, and it makes a combo as well. Like, just sick plays. I don't think I could have even brought myself to go for that. That's crazy. That's also when he sometimes tops out. Exactly, that's what I mean. Wild. Um, but let's go back to this blue-red move you mentioned. I don't want to spend too much time focusing on individual moves because this is a long one, but... Yeah, that's a great move, honestly. Um, there's not really many other places to put this red-blue that Snipe has in columns one and two. The only other thing that comes out uh, is maybe, nope, what, the only color I didn't want, of course. Nope. <laughs> it's just blue and red like this. Um, that would have been great. Um, but it's hard to see that in the moment. Like, you'd have to be looking really deep in the stack to really even find this move. And also it's slow. And also it doesn't really do anything. It sort of invests in your future maybe a little bit, where maybe this blue-red square will group will become a double combo in, like, a minute from now. But, uh... It does. It just takes so much longer to get to your next pill that it might not even be worth doing in the, at all. I think this probably is the best move, honestly. The under clear of the yellows makes the blue worth. Yeah, exactly. So I should explain that. You're right. This reason this is good is just because not only if is this possible is it possible to drop these reds down and make a combo, but even if you get like a double yellow, which he's probably going to do right now, um, you can just put it here, and then the red blue falls down, and uh, the blue is lined up with this blue virus at the bottom. So he had the foresight to think of that, um, and when he made this placement up top, knowing he had this underclear to sort of make it all work, um, that's just yeah, next level foresight from Snipe. Because uh, the top line, when the top line had nothing for him, he was able to find this move uh, by looking deeper into the stack. Absolutely huge. garbage yeah he'll just have to use that w to take this out at some point i think uh i think that the going finding this horizontal opportunity must be something he'd like to do very difficult just because he has he needs some kind of platform here on this side but it's difficult to find the pills to want to do that um without blocking things up underneath uh so i'm curious to see how he's going to try to get to that or if he's just going to ignore it and maybe just do like Maybe this blue yellow with this blue garbage falling, he'll end up putting like a, uh, like a blue yellow here and then like a blue red like this and make a combo out of it and just ignore the horizontal altogether. I think it'll depend what pills he gets, but we'll see what he does here. Yeah, he's just going to clear it off, but this actually does make a decent platform for him and he's going to take it. Wow, well done. Yeah, he took some drop time to make that happen and to get these yellows uh, down in this spot here. Um, but uh yeah, it's exactly what he needed. He ended up leaving some garbage behind. But honestly, as I was saying before, it's such a difficult horizontal to get without leaving any garbage behind. So I think that's about as clean as you can hope for, to be honest. Pretty good move. Yep, still setting up for more combos here. That's very good. He's going to leave some garbage behind, but he is at least keeping his combos up. That's important. He's got to look at this sweet, sweet horizontal setup. It's just, he's not making much progress on the board, but he's keeping the combos going, and Hebe's not in a great spot either. Oh, man. 
I mean, not to give any spoilers, but there's still plenty of time left in this video, which means that Hibimata survives this. I don't mean to cheat and start analyzing their player, but I don't know how Hebe survives this. That's insane. Especially if Snipe's looking really good. He's going to have to keep up. He keeps the pressure here. Hebe Mata's going to just be in a lot of trouble. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just saw a huge combo. We'll talk about that when we go back and rewatch with him. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that was a misdrop, and he's just sort of rolling with it with this move. Uh, suddenly, we're seeing a lot of garbage on Snipe's side. Um, like I was saying, Hebe was way up at the top of the board. Um, but you, this is exactly why comebacks are possible. When you're at the top of the board, you just have so much ammunition um, to uh, to fire garbage back at your opponent. You're dropping pills faster because you're just at the top of the screen. And there's just less travel distance for the pills to get to where they need to go. And uh, you usually have, because you have more pieces on the board, you just have more combo potential, assuming you've been setting those things up. So, yeah, and... and Snipe was looking so much cleaner even 30 seconds ago. And you probably hear commentators say that a lot, where, wow, his board was so clean, and now it's all it's totally flipped around. And that's just kind of a phenomena that happens in this game. Um, it's When you're at the top of the board, it's you have the ability to come back because you have less distance to, try, to move your pills, and you have the ability to make more combos usually than the other person. And if you can make a lot of them in a row, then even a clean board like Snipe had 10 seconds ago can just fill up with garbage like it was nothing and mess things up completely. So you can, you know, you don't underestimate how much damage you can do when you're behind, for sure. Uh, Hibimato obviously was almost about to top out, and now you can see he's got a very clear situation. Well, not that clear, but uh, uh, a decently clear situation. He's kind of set up this roof strat again, like we talked about earlier, on the right side as well. Um, maybe not, you know, uh, intentionally, I would say. Maybe the garbage came up here and he just decided... You know what? Forget it. This blue virus is probably going to be a big issue if he gets to the end game, unless he can underclear some things, which he may do. Uh, but we'll see if we even get to that point. Let's keep watching Snipe's game. Man, Snipe is losing setups to garbage. Very unfortunate, but he'll find a sweet uh, triple there. It's very good. Nice under clear find. Takes a little pressure off the center. He's got some garbage here, and he's also uh, set up this double yellow situation here. So if you're going to do something like this, I just want to point this out because this is something a mistake I see people make. In, at any level, honestly, um, if you uh, if you see someone doing something like this, where they have the two yellow pieces here, and you're especially in the center column like this, um, obviously, if you get yellow blue, yellow blue, that's great. You're gonna get a combo. That's amazing. We love that. But uh, if you don't get what you need in a reasonable amount of time, you need to be very careful about leaving this setup here and holding out way too long. Because again. All it takes is one piece of garbage falling here, and uh, and that's this is suddenly a really bad situation to be in. Um, obviously, this garbage is giving him a bit of a combo. But yeah, empty clearing this yellow if you don't get exactly what you need. Like Even if I got like a double yellow, I'm probably just empty clearing this immediately because I just there's no reason to do that allow for that much damage to happen on your board. It's just not worth the risk um, of holding out to get exactly what you need um, and, and having some... Uh, especially in the center column where that could literally cost you the entire match uh, if that were to happen. So um, just be careful about vertical clearing like this in, in uh, these columns. Sometimes you have to go for it, but if you're going to do that, be diligent and make sure that you clear it as soon as humanly possible because uh, you do not want to leave a setup like this languishing only for garbage to eventually block it off and then you're in real trouble. Uh, will Snipe find the uh, the L opportunity here? Of course he does. <laughs> very nice. He's going to take another one to just clear the column down. Very well, very good find, I think. It's 
be what would be your first game without a top out as well. We'll actually get to see a little end game. Yep. Uh, just to illustrate the concept we were just talking about. Um, obviously there's some horizontal ideas here, but that's okay. Empty clear from snipe in column five. Very safe move. Big approve. We love that. Just did not want to leave this here. Just trying to open up his center so that he can get to he can get down to these bottom viruses. Um, you know, if you can get a combo, that's great. Sometimes the pills don't fall that way, and you just cannot leave things for too long. It's just a risk reward thing. It's, it's something you have to figure out by playing a lot. Uh, but I would err on the side of just clearing it as soon as possible, especially if you're not sure. Because uh, yeah, just be respo make some responsible moves. I'm not a big fan of greed in this game. That's just sort of my play style. So any chance I get to clear out stuff like that. Uh, I'll absolutely do it. And I totally respect that move by Snipe here. Yeah, he's slowly but surely making his way down, but Hebe's not making it easy. Still looking for combos, still finding combos. Very good. He's gonna find this red blue here. It's gonna be a triple. And uh he's slowly getting there. He's gonna take this out horizontally. It's actually gonna make a combo if he can get there. Not quite getting the pills, but uh give it a few more moves, maybe he will get there. Oh, maybe he'll just go underneath and get these yellows. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, so far I like every move he's making here. Some unfortunate garbage, perhaps. Oh, I don't know that that double blue is very unfortunate. I don't really know what else he could have done. Uh, well, let's go back a little further. Like there's so many, like it looks like there's so many, so much potential here, but unfortunately, like this this blue horizontal that you'd like to take up here doesn't really have a good platform. And if you put anything in here other than like a yellow blue, I guess, like you could put a yellow blue like this to make a platform, but then it doesn't match up with the fat log. But you don't even really have that option either. It looks like this should be a really good combo, uh, setup. There should be some kind of combo set up here somewhere, but no matter how I look at it, it just never really pans out that way. Everything is just unfortunately misplaced. So honestly, as much as I don't love that he cleared this double blue out, that might honestly be the best move because even if you do this and get rid of the uh, get rid of the, um, uh, the the entire column there and the platform for this horizontal. He didn't really break anything. Honestly, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, he must have broken a setup somewhere, but he actually didn't. There's actually no setup here. This is actually just a really unfortunate position where he has a lot of yellow blue horizontal opportunities, but none of them are they're all kind of blocked off in some way. So yeah, I don't know what else he could have done on that one. Um and this is actually not uh a, there's not a lot of potential on this board. He's gonna have to do some like empty clearing, I think, before he goes any further with this. So we'll see how he plays this now. He does have a red blue setup here though, and some setups on the right. That was a nice drop. Again, didn't make a combo, but like I said, there was no real opportunities here. Um, so he's just gonna make a T, and that garbage is gonna do it perfectly for him. Yeah, I think that T was probably the best thing to play for here. Like if I go back a bit. He didn't really, you know, it's really hard to see from here. He just makes this horizontal clear. Just empty, and now suddenly he has this really nice double yellow set or this yellow T setup. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So like I said, it, you really did need to do some clearing. Sometimes if you really can't find a setup or you think things are messed up, sometimes you do have to just do some empty clears to uh, to get yourself in a spot where you can make a combo. Because uh, yeah, sometimes there really just is no all combo opportunities on your board, and you have to do whatever you can to get shift the board around to uh, to find something. Uh, we'll we'll watch through this again, and luckily uh, he just gets the, he was gonna get the yellow blue anyway, but he'll take that, and then just sets up another combo setup here anyway, which he will take. It's 
setting up on this horizontal for a combo. That's wonderful. This yellow here is very awkward. There's no way to horizontally clear it. He finds something insanely good over here, though, so props to Snipe. And this is just kind of rudimentary endgame here. He's in such a great spot, and uh, I'm going to talk about why I think that is when we talk about Hebe's game, because I did notice some things on Hebe's game I wanted to mention. Um, but we'll get to that when we uh, when we watch it from his perspective. As usual, Hebe's not making it easy for him. Not take the horizontal because there's no combo there. It just sets up. Fortunately, the garbage ruins it, but he gets a red blue anyway. It all works out. He had a lot of possibilities and options there. He's still just trying to make combos as we as he goes. There's another blue red setup here. He's just gonna block it for a different setup, so that's fine. That double red could have been here, but he'll uh, make the best of it. Yeah. Since we're on his last virus, I just want, and it's not in a particularly obvious spot. This is very rough. I'm trying to think right now just like how I'm clearing this out. Because there's so much vertical pressure on this red virus with these five pieces that are basically traffic lighted, uh, I think the best bet is probably just to try to go horizontal. Um, Maybe this yellow blue is gonna go like uh like this, and then you can eventually get to something like uh, like just like this, and then uh you'll have um a combo set up here or something maybe a, a blue yellow goes the other way, try to combo out of it, but if you can just get these yellows and blues out of here um then you have it'll be much easier to do that and take this horizontally, I think than trying to do it from a vertical perspective um maybe if you get uh like if you put this let's say you put this first yellow blue down and then the next pill is going to be like so and then the next pill is going to be a double red that you can place like that and then suddenly these blue reds fall on top of each other and maybe vertical is a possibility but barring barring anything like that i think the simplest plan is just clear these out take this red horizontally there's just way less pressure horizontally than there is vertically in this case so always, you know, there's more than, you don't have to always go vertical. And if you see a virus that's just surrounded by the wrong color, um, sometimes you just have to dig it out. And I think that's going to be the easiest way for him to do that. Let's see how he plays it. Oh, he is going to, he's kind of doing both actually. <laughs> and now he doesn't want to ruin the setup by going horizontally. I wonder if he'll get punished for doing this. No, he's going to get exactly what he needs. And now, well, unfortunately, this blue covered it. But as I was saying, you can get that horizontal, and now the blue reds have fallen. He had a yellow blue set up to expose the red, which would have been amazing. Um, unfortunately, that's uh, that blue garbage is going to fall and block the whole thing off, which sucks. It's unlucky, but uh, I think he played it very well, actually. He even kind of played both of those plans I explained at the same time. Uh, if we go back a little bit here, and you can see it. Um, this he he placed these yellows in such a way that he created a platform for the red horizontal but he also was able to sort of stack up these yellows so that if things don't go his way and he might still have the horizontal opportunity and just whatever comes first uh is what he's going to end up doing so let's see what happens now that this garbage falls if uh there's any this yellow also is unfortunate because it blocks him off he's just going to take a combo and i think now oh Oh, I think he's just trying to do some combos to just sort of keep uh, Hebe Motto from burying him too much. That's an interesting play. Like, you definitely can't stop comboing just because you're in endgame with one virus left. So that's probably the smart thing to do. And he's now going to expose this red vertically. Interesting. I think he could have done it a couple of ways, probably, if you go back and analyze. But um, I think he's going to get there. Yeah, the blue comes down, and this is going to be the last virus that he needs here. And that's going to be game for Snipe. Awesome. Yeah, I, like I said, there's options both ways. I really didn't think he was going to get it vertically. But uh, yeah, that horizontal plan was definitely um, a good find, I think. We just go all the way back here. Just to see this red idea, um, even before he set it all up. But like, yeah, 
whenever you see something like a, a stack like this, I always try to look for options. I was like, can I skim a horizontal out to make this neater, to make a neat vertical stack? Um, I've talked before in the past about how doing that on the edges is really, really important to find because it's a great combo opportunity that also helps your board health massively. But it's also important in end game situations like this to try to find these cool like uh, horizontal opportunities um, that uh, will just clean up the board very nicely for you. Sometimes it's not as messy as it looks. And he was able to find that. And uh, that's, uh, I mean, I don't think that Hebe was necessarily going to come back from that. But again, we'll we'll get to that when we uh, when we come back to this part um, in Hebe's watch through here. So let's get that going. I'm just going to go all the way back. This is a long one. Nope. Nope. Uh, wait. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, let's... Let's start this again from Hebe's side. Wow, what a nice find. This blue yellow move probably looks kind of silly. He could have easily done like a vertical like a horizontal thing or a vertical combo setup over here with this blue yellow that he placed, but honestly I love this. It is going to be a little awkward that he put the double yellow up here now, but um he's just going to clear the whole thing out. So, uh, um horizontally at this point and this double blue he's going to get is uh, I believe what he did is what he actually did he put it like this and now you even have a combo that you're going to get out of it absolutely awesome get some garbage but it gives him a yellow red setup so that's really good he's going for this horizontal Wow, that's huge. What foresight. He's setting up this blue, and at first glance, this blue horizontal has nowhere to go. It's blocked here, it's blocked here. But he, he's just setting it up in advance so that like the yellow-red, when it comes in and it clears this combo, he's going to have another one for any blue. Any blue that he can put here is just going to give him a follow-up right after that, which is huge. I mean, even if, say, garbage blocks you off here, you even have a backup where like you can just like yellow-blue and uh, the blue will fall down and, and chain everything out. That's huge. Absolutely awesome. Uh, this is such advanced stuff. Like, I, uh, if, you're, if, you, if you ask me how you're supposed to find these sorts of moves, that you should ask Keeping Lotto. I honestly, like, I'm not, I, not that I've never done anything like this before. It's not that difficult. But when you're in the moment, it is very difficult to see this sort of thing. This is definitely like advanced uh, planning for sure. And then he gets a double yellow too. That's crazy. It all just gets knocked down. That's huge. Whoa. Even all the setups are sick. This is the first game too where he's really sort of taken the early advantage. The last two games, he ran into problems early with some garbage and it ended up getting him topped out. But this game, you really get to see some of the crazy setups that TB Mod is capable of. Just finds this yellow red, no problem. And then the double red to put on top of it in order to set up this combo here. That's amazing. And then he gets another, yeah. I mean, he is getting the exact pills he needs for sure, but um, he has the skill to find this sort of stuff. It's incredible. And I think here he's going to do another wild setup. Like he just puts this blue yellow here. I so I see his idea. He's gonna do like blue red, and then he's just gonna have another blue here. He's gonna get an L into a trip. Uh, yeah, like so good. Great use of finding a horizontal to make combos as he makes his way down the board. Just next level stuff, man. I see this stuff, and I find it hard to believe he actually lost this game because <laughs> it's looking so good right now in the early game. I appreciate the setups. Uh, actually, I mean, I had a thought of like maybe putting the double yellow here in order to just clear out the edge. But I mean, he does have a yellow red set up here, so it's not the word like it's not that greedy, really. This is pretty, pretty good. And he's making a setup in the center. So I don't know. It's uh, 
It's close to call. I don't think either move would be terrible. Uh, terribly worse than the other, rather. But, uh, yeah. It's, uh, the way he's playing is just so next level. It's hard to criticize anything he's doing, really, <laughs> to be honest. Amazing. I had to point this out, too. This double red that he places here, such a good find. Um, I mean, he could have... There isn't really another great place for it, but uh, he just, again, found this shape on the side of the board that I've mentioned before. Um, he's just finding this a way to... Re using the double red to be able to remove this. Without this double red, it's really hard to get rid of this red piece in column one and make the combo. You basically... Well, you don't need a double red. You could fill in the bottom here and then make a platform out of it or something, which is an option. But when you get the double red, I always look for horizontal stuff like this whenever I get a double piece because sometimes double pieces will get you to this combo faster than anything else possibly could. They're so good for com for horizontals because they don't necessarily... like You don't need this platform here anymore. You can just hang overhang it the way he's about to do and now you now you have a horizontal setup uh, faster than if you had had to wait for the right pieces to fill in the spot and then make a platform. So yeah, it's uh, that that was a huge find for Hebe Motto. Always look for this sort of thing, especially for like edge cases when you see this sort of this sort of pattern on the side with a a, a, a sandwiched uh, red piece or a sandwiched off color piece in the center. Just find a way to de sandwich, and usually horizontals are uh, and double pieces. Are the way you're going to do that. And he does. Okay, there it is again. Uh, if you see it up here, um, he, I didn't, I couldn't tell if he had done this intentionally when I was looking at this, uh, when we were looking at Snape's game, I kind of noticed uh, at some point that Hebe's right side was very filled with garbage, and I couldn't tell if he had intentionally done that or if he had done another little roof strat here. Um, I think very clearly that he placed, as you can see, this is just not comboing or doing anything productive in that sense. This is definitely like a deliberate roof that he's made here. Um, we're going to see what kind of effect that has on the game. This is just something I noticed while we were watching from the other side. Um, we'll come back to this. Remember that he did this on purpose, and we'll talk about it later in this game. Oh, he did an empty clear here. Okay, I was kind of surprised by that. I was so sure this double blue was going to be going just... Oh, I see why now. <laughs> I thought it was going to go like this, but he actually can't make that move because it'll just clear out column one, So that, which is no good. So he just actually did the correct thing. He's going to do a vertical clear here, which, uh, yeah, he, I think he was going to do it and then realize at the last second. Unfortunate, because we want to get rid of this blue piece, but... There's no way to use it horizontally there in that spot. So we're just going to have to clear out the blues. And uh, now he can clear. Uh, if he can get a red in this spot here, he's got a combo. If he can get a double red, he's got a sweet fat log combo that uh, that then drops into a triple. Drops the center column as well. Um, unfortunately, he got neither of those things. He got a blue yellow. I'm not really sure what he's going to do with that. That's kind of rough. He's just going to fill it in. And then he's going to fill this here. Oh, and that's so unfortunate. He's going to fill this here, and in theory, he has this blue-yellow coming to get knock this combo down, which I'm sure he was thinking. And he's going to get a really unopportune double garbage here to fill in this gap, and now the right side is really rough. I don't know that he could have necessarily played around this. If we go back to this double-blue move, like, what I mean, you could totally put it here, and then try to pill the lead off the top, but again, that's risking death. And he knows blue-yellow is coming if he's watching the next box. So to just put it here is actually great. Uh, and he'll get it in one pill, he'll be able to knock this down. But uh, unfortunately, uh, that's the garbage completely blocks off whatever he wanted to do. And uh, now there's no way to fit a pill into this space. So he's going to have to come up with something else. Maybe um, he might have to just take this uh, red horizontal without the double, which I'm sure he'd love to get a big hammer combo here, but um, uh, I don't think he has the luxury of waiting for something like that now that this has happened. So we'll see what he does here. 
Oh, that's rough. I don't see any other way he completes that sequence because there's just no yellow axis whatsoever. Um, so this is part of the issue, I think, with this roof strat that he had here. Because the pills did not work out, um, it's obviously put him in this position. But the fact that he has done this roof strat, the biggest downfall to me of this is that you lose two columns of space on your board pretty much for the rest of the game. Um, like you would like it so that this you're sheltered from garbage, but then when you have it fully filled like this, where you have uh, um, just seven and eight totally filled all the way to the top and you have no space underneath to work with, um, then this roof strat gets very bad. Um, you, you lose a lot of space in the center. And as we're going to see later, it also can really impact your end game. And if the game drags out to the end game and your opponent is ahead of you, it's almost impossible to come back from the spot if you try to do a roof. Um, we'll we'll get to that. You'll see when we get to the end of the game sort of what happens on Hebe Mato's board and why the roof strat is sort of maybe backfired a little bit on him in this one. We'll get there, though. He's just getting hammered with garbage. Always be comboing, of course. Oh, whoa. Yeah, I think that maybe that was just... There was just no other way. Yeah, see, he's just so out of options. He's he's forced to break his setups. He goes for a... That was a nice find. I would have just taken the double myself. Finds a sweet, fat log. He's actually breaking everything down here. That was wild. Let's go back and look at that. So he's just keeping all these groups of threes. He's got a three, a three, a three. He's got like a T set up here. Um, I don't know how much of this was intentional and he really didn't have a lot of options, but he finds this blue red piece going here as opposed to just taking it across like this and getting the easy double. Um, he actually goes for a full T, which he'll get with this blue yellow that's about to come down the pipe here. And, uh, it ends up being a quad combo, but he's still very far behind, unfortunately. Things are starting to clear up for him now. I do like this horizontal idea he's got going on. Gets him a sweet combo. I don't know that it's really helping him move down the board, but um, I mean, he's sending garbage and he's starting to make a comeback. He's definitely gumming up Snipe's board with all this uh, trash that's falling on him. And if you look here, uh, Hibimoto is actually, he was almost dead at the top of the screen, and now he's got a lot of space, whereas Snipe is looking pretty messy. Um, the big issue, though, is these two columns here that are filled with mostly garbage at the top and still have viruses even as far as halfway up the board, and this blue in particular is in a particularly like egregious spot here. Um, again, we'll let this keep playing through, but... This is really going to come back to bite Hibimoto at the end game. We'll get to that uh, in a little bit here. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's uh, not too much going on here. He's just finding the good moves, more or less. Mm, that's really unfortunate. I don't know how much I love this red-yellow here. Uh, blocking off the blue. He tried to play with it, but then the garbage just really made this missed drop even worse here, unfortunately. Uh, I wonder if he should have just maybe taken a safer move, like if we go back. 
wonder if maybe he should have played this just as like an empty clear or something. Could have played it like here and had it drop down. Uh, could have done. Well, actually, that's really the only other move I see that makes any sense. Um, but I don't know. It's a tough move to be honest. I just I, f I feel like there. Well, I feel like there just has to be a better move than this somehow. Like that just doesn't. There's got that can't be right. I feel like, but you know, maybe maybe it was just the best thing he saw in the moment. That's really tough. And honestly, I I, I don't know what I would have done in this case. That's a really tough move. Um, at least he just went ahead and made the move, and that was uh, and didn't waste too much time thinking about it when it was uh, probably not worth it anyway. Yimimon is still finding combos, but as you can see, like, Snipe is really pulling away here. Uh, if you take a look, I mean, he's third, he's, he's really come back. He's still very much ahead. Um, and, and his messy board has been really cleared out. And the biggest reason I think for that is that he has just more space to work with. Again, this roof strat is really kind of hampering Yimimon's ability to create a lot of space on his board, which really limits his options. And uh, I think that that was kind of a key factor in, in why he wasn't able to really truly make a comeback here. It was just he was just too slowed down in the end game by the fact that his columns were so filled up. Um, we'll see as as we keep going how it kind of continues in that way where he they're making combos or sending garbage back and forth, but he's never really able to make the kind of progress he really needs to make um, to overtake Snipe here. Oh, I feel like that must have been a panic. These double yellows, unfortunate. Trying to make some horizontal setups. That's definitely good. That's huge. That was beautiful. That was a Betty level combo there. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Again, he's made a lot of progress on this side, but as you can see, where are all of his remaining viruses? those those right columns that were blocked off early on by the roof strat uh even like just looking at it, the game from this position even if he clears all the rest of the side out uh, of the center out and uh, leaves himself with only the right side and has to he'll have to start attacking all of this horizontally two columns worth of horizontal viruses meanwhile uh snipe has so much more room to just dig around uh the garbage and get to his, his end game completed and I think in the end of the day, that's where the roof strap kind of falls apart, um, especially if you only get it on one side, like Hibimoto did here. You just end up having these issues where with end game, if you if if you get to the end game and your opponent uh, um, hasn't topped out, they're just going to overtake you in the end game when you do the strat. I think that's really the biggest downfall of this one. Um, I definitely think there's some merit to roof to the roof strap, but this is kind of the perfect example of the issue that I have with it. I think there's maybe some more work to be done to figure out where this strat should be implemented, when it's appropriate, when it's not appropriate. Um, maybe the, you know there's maybe some merit to it in like niche situations, but overall, I just think that this honestly hurt Hebe Motto in the end more than it helped him, and we'll uh, we'll see that as we keep playing through here. He's making some awesome setups, but uh, yeah, against Snipe, especially against a player like Snipe, I just don't think it's going to be enough. Even now, like with, with Snipe's board health looking like it's really creeping up, doesn't really feel like he's making much of a dent here because he's just never going to get to his endgame. And the garbage is just hurting Snipe so much less than the incoming garbage is hurting Hebe Motto.
keep going. We can see Snipe. Again, he's just getting closer to his end game. All his viruses save maybe this red one here that he clears at the end. Totally exposed. He's getting them all in combos. And Hibimoto's making a little progress, but he even has this yellow totally buried over here. You can see it. He has all of these. This blue up here that's totally surrounded by yellow has no way to access this. Like, I'm, I think, I, honestly, if you're in this spot, you honestly just have to go for comboing and trying to... Uh, the top snipe out. That's the only way I could see Hibimoto, even a player like him, winning from a spot like this. Uh, but if he was going to do that, he had to do it probably like 30 seconds to a minute ago and start implementing that strategy because uh, uh, at this point now, even in a spot like this, yeah, it's still possible. This red is pretty buried, to be honest, but um, it's probably... Just, if, you, if you're just sending the odd double... Uh, it's just not going to be enough to make the comeback. Uh, and if you don't intend to clear out all these viruses, you're eventually probably going to have to pop out Snipe um, to try to win here. And I just, I don't even know if that's possible, to be honest. So, yeah, it's just a very unfortunate spot for Hibimoto. And I think, again, the Roost Strat really contributed to putting him here in this in this position. He's making a lot of great setups, but... Yeah, it's just really not helping him enough. He's just never not going to catch up, especially if Snipe doesn't let up on combos, which clearly he isn't. It's really just delaying the inevitable at this point. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we're going to watch out the end of this game, but there's really nothing more to see here. Hebe's just going to keep making these combos, which is... Fine, but it's just not enough. This yellow garbage, just insult to injury at this point. And he's going to get it there. And that's GG. Yeah. So that is going to sum it up. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, DB Model's roof strats really didn't work out. I will say, to be fair, in, in full to be, you know, full disclosure, these guys did play again in the grand finals and Hibimoto did win five games straight against Snipe. So there may have been, you know, he definitely adjusted when he played him again in the grand final set. Um, I would definitely go and watch that. The only reason we didn't review it tonight is because it was 40 minutes long and it took me almost two hours to get through a 13 minute match. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would love to review matches like that, but I feel like if they're too long, people are just not going to really want to watch. So uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to figure something out. Maybe I'll try to shift up my analysis style to try to get through those games a little quickly. Maybe we'll just watch one half of each of those matches. Um, if, the, if there's a lot of games to get through, or we'll try to kind of analyze both at the same time. We won't go over specific moves, maybe analyze more generally. Um, but, uh, if you just want to go see it, it is on the monthly checkup YouTube. Um, it is an amazing set. 40 minutes of just mastery on both sides of the, of the screen. So uh, go check out the YouTube um, and uh, see about, uh, see, see if it's one of the more recent videos. Um, you can also check out past VOD reviews there, past matches from all of our monthly tournaments. Um, I'm going to sum it up there. Uh, so yeah, uh, just so that ever, anyone watching is aware, uh, next month or, or next week, rather, there will not be a VOD review as uh, we are going to have on Tuesday the 23rd, um, we're going to have the next uh, monthly checkup for the month of April. So we'll be streaming that here on this channel uh, on Twitch. You can uh, come and watch it live. And then the VODs will be up shortly after that on YouTube. Other than that, though, I think that's uh, mostly going to be it. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, be safe, stay warm. And until next time, we'll see you then.